you know, growing up, growing up in New England, there's two teams that I just I grew to loathe. Okay, it was the Red Sox and the Patriot fans. Okay, the Patriot fans of the of the late '90s, early 2000s. Okay. And I'll be honest with you, I compare some of the Irish fan base to those folks. And to cover the Irish and to hear these folks that are just, it's about them. It's not. This team owes me. Look what's going on in New England. You know, Tom Brady's gone and they're not the same team. They're not winning. The fans don't know how to react to this. You know what I'm saying? They don't know how it is not to win. And and I guess that's just a story of life. You don't win all the time. The, and you got to learn to deal with the low times and do, and enjoy the good times. Well, and you make an interesting point, too, because all the years that Tom Brady was with the Patriots, they did not win all the time either. I mean, yeah. she, she thought the heartbreaking Super Bowl, Super Bowl they had against your Giants. <laughs> But people still. But the thing is, they lost. They lost. They lost that 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 Super Bowl. They lost the chance to have the first undefeated season since the uh, what was it? The nineteen the seventy two Dolphins. Yeah. They lost that, but you know what? They weren't calling for Tom Brady to be gone. They weren't calling for Bill Belichick to be gone. They they were disappointed, but they still loved Tom Brady. Well, and so we won't, we, yeah. won't, we won't forget what Giselle had said. You know. After that game, it's like we had to let somebody else win, as, as, as they told their kids. So <laughs> you know, there's there's that right there. You know, right. that's that's part of that whole mantra of of winning all the time. It's tell your kids the truth. You don't win all the time, and it's not easy. No, because this is why the games are played. Yeah, last they're... year Notre Dame. Was it last year? Last year, Notre Dame was picked to be last in the ACC. There was no talk about Notre Dame baseball being where it was, okay? And when you make it and you win the ACC, okay, I believe they won the ACC. Um, and, and you make it that deep into the col- into the College World Series, there's something to be said about desire. Oh, abs- absolutely. Because they're on board and everything's got to work. Everything everything needs to everything needs to be there and the the fans weren't allowed to be there but when they were allowed in the, when they were allowed to be there, they showed up. You know, they is whatever they could, they showed up, you know, for the games and you know, Things are turning around, but you, you you have to be you have to be in it, and there shouldn't be only enjoying the good times and then doing away when there's bad times. It's that that's not reality. Yeah, that's. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, no, you're absolutely right. People see people don't realize there's going to be a time of transition, you know, and it's like, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen this with athletes and like mainly individual sports, for example, like, like, like uh, boxing or MMA or, or whatever, you know, when they lose for the first time, you know, they don't, they don't know how to handle it. And the, and the same thing applies to the fans that, that that's the kind of the comparison I'm getting here is, you know, you don't, the, these people think that that can never happen to them, that they can never lose, that they can never not have success. And then when that, and when they, when they get faced with that reality or when they get hit with that reality, they don't know how to handle it. I mean, it's the same, it, it's comes all the way back here to us at Notre Dame, you know? Yeah. We had, we had so much success for years, you know, with, with football, but then, once Lou Holtz retired and, you know, we had, and Bob Davey came in and then after him, it was Ty Willingham and Charlie Weiss. There were moments of success in there, but overall it was, it was an inconsistent time. It was, it was, it was mediocre to losing. 
or losing a mediocre level at best. Well, see, and this is where, you know, where things start to change, right? There was a point in time that nobody else was on national TV and Notre Dame was the only one that was on TV on a consistent basis with the NBC relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. The game changes. Um, I'll say alumni change. Um, all this other stuff changes. The way programs go about doing things changes. Okay. The and part of it is you have and and, and this 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 is the stigma I guess of, as well, Sean, is that you're not going to get that you're not going to get the the cop that high school recruit, okay who doesn't have a GPA that's going to be able to be able to be set up for success. Okay. I'm surprised it actually took this long in the show for it to get here, but it's, it's it, those that's, that's another part you got to deal with. Notre Dame is not going to change their policy for a student. That's that, that's not going to be able to succeed in the classroom. Oh, and I'm We're glad you brought this up. Totally I different level. I hear this a lot too. Uh, as much as I, as much as I did, every argument that I've heard about any everything we've talked about, I've heard this one just as much. Along with, uh, oh, the fans got to show me something so I don't sell my ticket, or I don't like the coach, so that's why I sold my ticket. I'm a realist. I've heard this just as much as those. Notre Dame needs to lower its ed academic standards so we can get these big name guys and yada 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 and whatnot. Well, look at what we, we've been able to do with the academic standards where they're at. It's changing. We're, we're still we're still winning. Do we need? To, I mean, yeah, we got to get over that hump, but we've shown that we can get there. You know what? And, since the since the twenty eighteen season and the loss that we had against Clemson, that Notre Dame had against Clemson, um, down at the down at the Cotton Bowl. Okay. Yeah. The program has been left in a better place progressively since then. If you're talking about a turnaround in the locker room, it was since when they went four and eight, okay, the following year to turn around, okay, and they've gotten better. And specific coach decides to leave. You bring in a new coach, and he's breaking down. It, it, it's – there's so many different factors, Sean, that go into this whole criticism thing. Right. And as we said, it, it comes with management and stuff like that. You need, if, if, if folks are taking away the barriers to make the program better, then good things will happen. But in this case, folks are still going to complain. And, and that's the kicker. You're still going to have that part that's going to go and there's going to be just this big thing of criticism. Can Freeman do it? He's never had a head coaching job before. We've all been in this position where we haven't done a job before. I'll say specifically to myself, the group that I'm working for now within my company, I didn't have the experience that everyone else on the team had. They brought me in for a key, fa a key factor, which I can deliver to the team to make it as better as a whole. Okay? They gave me that opportunity. Folks need to let opportunities happen because stuff happens over time. You have to make it. It's all about making the right adjustments. And some teams make are better at making adjustments than others. Okay. But I just, I don't know. You just, there comes a point in time where it just becomes noise and no one listens. No one's going to listen to it. Well, and it's getting know, very close. Well, you, you know, it's funny, George. I mean, uh, you brought you brought something to my mind here in regards to that. Now you you and I both belong to some some common uh like like Notre Dame Facebook uh, Notre Dame football Facebook groups and whatnot. Um, I don't want to give names because I don't want to I don't want to embarrass the group because of uh, just a couple a couple select uh, negative people and bring it you know bring them some bad uh some bad spotlight. Yeah. But I've seen a, there's been a few uh, people that are even getting on Marcus Freeman's case, like you were just saying, and he's only coached one game and I know oh, because he lost that game. It's an, it's an abysmal failure. All it's an atomic failure already. 
And one of the, uh, where was I going with this? Um, the group. But I, yeah, anyway, I, uh, uh, these, these couple people in particular, I could give them names if I wanted to, but just, it's been very, it's been very few, not much. The, the cause overall with Marcus Freeman, it, the positivity has been, has been phenomenal, but that's one thing that I've learned is that you can make the changes. You can, um, you can make the adjustments and it still will not be good enough. Um, but I guess one, th- one, th- interesting thing. Is I guess this this is kind of where I was going with it, where I was going with uh, with this point. Um, you know, you talk about Marcus Freeman never having had a head coaching position before. Well, you know who else didn't have a, a head coaching position before they started with Notre Dame? New Rockton. Yes, you knew where I was going with that. He may have been. I think he was an assistant with them, and I think he even. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he even taught chemistry at the university, didn't he? Mm-hmm. So, but the bottom line is he'd never had a. Um, a head coaching position before, and I'm just curious. Um, I my memory's a little dusty, but I don't think that that tenure went too bad, did it? I don't think so. I mean, I, mean, I think he did. I think he did okay, didn't he? I think he did okay. <laughs> but it's about people just sitting back and see what happens. Yeah. So I guess. So I guess I I was kind of killing two birds with one stone there inadvertently, but. Yeah, I, I just want to make that point with Freeman and the comparison to Newt Rockney that Newt Rockney didn't have a, a previous head coaching spot either. But that, that also proves my other point is there are people in this fan base that, you know what, we could, under Marcus Freeman, we could win 10 straight national championships. We could, we could become what Alabama is now. And I guarantee you, if that were to happen and we, and we won 10 straight national championships – there would be somebody like these select few that I've seen in these in these uh, groups that you, you and I are both a part of that they would still be complaining. They would find something to complain about. Maybe a select a select play in the game, or the color of the uniform, or this or that. Take your pick. There so, are there are people who just bitch to bitch. It's because they make it about them. There's something. It, it's it's a personal. It's a personal thing in the end if a person's complaining like that they have a there's a bigger axe to grind and that that's their outlet that's the one thing that they can go and take it out on and it's it's tough i mean you want to follow a team that wins then go follow alabama go look at clemson clemson had a problem this year right they didn't even make the tournament they never even made they no, they didn't make the, the, the college football playoffs. And it was the first time I mean, I didn't hear a lot coming out of the fan base. You know, it's all in the way you handle yourself. If if you think that you're just you're you are it and you think that someone owes you something, you need to check yourself and really think about do you want to follow? Do you do you want to be part of this? Because to me, you take the good with the bad, and you know it is what it is. Well, I, I here's an, another way to put it too. If if you, I, I mean, obviously, I don't have kids. I mean, I I know you do. I know Ben does. But um, now granted, <laughs> his kids uh still still a baby, but. If, if you're a parent and your kid fails one test, are you going to stop loving them? Nope. I mean, are, and are at the same it's time, to... go ahead. Sorry. I, I was going to say, but at the same, and at the same time too, if, if your child improves and let's say they only get an, let's say they only get an A minus instead of an A, are you going to look down on them because they, <laughs> they got that because that minus is there? Well, let's That's just not... say you should never call your, you should never call your kid a failure. Okay. That's my point. Never ever call you. You would never ever call your kid a failure, and all you're doing is emotionally damaging somebody when you go out and you do that. And, and that and that's how I compare compare the fans that do this with with uh with their with their teams and in, in this case Notre Dame. You know, it's like 
you're 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 essentially acting like that parent that that beats their kid with the belt because they only got an A instead of an A plus. It's I, told, I mean, it's I, ridiculous. I told my daughter, I said, as long as you've applied yourself and you've done what you can, that's all that I can ask. Yeah, you know, that's that's all that you can ask. You did your best, and that that's all you can ask. If you go out there and you do your best and you can't win. Well, that means that someone brought that somebody else brought their best, and they just did better. Yeah, it's it's that's that's the spirit of competition. When when you when you when you look back on the history of all these discussions of of what's going on with within the fan base, people just I understand the level of success that's expected, but. It doesn't always happen, plain and simple. You can have, it, 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 you know what it comes down to, too? It's all about who you, it's all about the, I'll talk about the management again. Sometimes you have personalities that just don't mix. That's true. That's very true. Okay. And sometimes that that doesn't help the chemistry of a team. It could be one, it could be two players. You know, basketball, there's only 10 players on the squad. Okay, men's and women's basketball is 10 players. Football, you have 85 to whatever. Okay. And a coach, going back to the name that won't be mentioned, would never want would never put a team on the field that didn't feel that would be able to do it. Okay. There's some ownership when the team loses. If you've prepped them enough, it should become like muscle memory, like like Coach, like Lou Holtz said. And his players continue to say today that the games become easier than the practice. Okay. That's true. Um, it's all it's all about how it's all brought together and put together. Um, is the Freeman factor going to be there? It, it should be. He he he's a pretty humble guy. Yeah, you know he's 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 a he's a complete reverse of what Brian Kelly was. As far as humble pie is concerned, um, but I just I think you got to give everybody a fair shot. Is what it comes down to is, and check yourself. Would you would you want the criticism that you're giving? And my answer would be um, no. Of course not. Of course not. And I think I think a lot of it too is you know we've talked about these type of fans that do that, they live vicariously through the, through these student athletes and the coaches. And I think, I think another factor that in addition to that is I think they want to, they wish they could have done what these coaches and what these kids have done and they can't do it themselves. And I think that's a lot, a lot of this where their anger comes from. Well, it's, it's, it's the fact that, you know, that they've got to, you know, they've got a chance to go to the university of Notre Dame, you know, and some people just, it's the whole Rudy thing. You know, he was told, no, 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 it's not going to happen. And then, and then he makes it, it, it's, it's a, it's all the way you apply yourself. Yes. But as a fan, in the end, the university doesn't owe you a thing. Nope. You spend, so stop spending your money. Stop getting signatures. Stop selling the signatures online. Stop selling the paraphernalia. Okay. You don't mind. You don't mind the one side of it where it's profitable. But on the flip side, when your the team doesn't win, it's it's you know it's I, I you you give up on them. Yeah, you're so ready to jump jump ship that quick, but then the next year they they make a big comeback. And it still doesn't mean crap. It's still not good enough. I and that's the one thing I just never understand. It's just our our the fan base of Notre Dame. There is a portion of the crowd that that is it's you have you have both sides of the pendulum. You have the fan that's that's a hundred percent in to the team you committed, and you got the other side where it's just. You know, it, it's it's for it's fo- it's like following the fancy it's it's following the fancy team. 
it, yes. it, it should be one of those things that don't, it's not, it's not a go wrong situation. It's a safe one. And that's, that's not what that's about. No, it's not. It, it should just be about you being loyal to the team that you chose to be loyal to. And if you love that team as much as you say that you do, there's no excuse that you shouldn't support them hundred percent. Forget about the coach, forget about records. If you love that team, then that's all that should should matter. When it comes to you know, when it comes to them stepping on the field, that's what it should come down to. And there's never an excuse that for you know for selling the team out or nothing ever being good enough or constantly complaining or being actually being disappointed that you made the postseason. I mean, that is just some of the most ridiculous things I've, yeah. I've ever seen have come in these last few years. Well, that's because the fan base is changing. It's a me, me, me. It's a me, me, me type of, you know, world nowadays. And, and it's the, the, it, and those, those older days are gone. They are. They are. I mean, that, you know, is. exactly. And I think, I think that's a good spot for us to, to end this, George. I mean, we've, we've covered a lot in what's going to turn out to be a, a three or four part series. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I don't, if I post a video that's over an hour and 40 minutes right now, nobody's going to have the attention span to sit down and watch that all the way through. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to break it down. <laughs> no, no, it's, and, and, and it's a, it's a to, it's, it's a topic that needs to be discussed. You beat me to the punch. I was going to say that same thing. Maybe not in those exact words. My words were going to be to anybody watching out there. Um, you know, you don't like it that I bring up the stadium takeovers of against Georgia in, in 17 and Nebraska in 2000 um, and the complaining and whatnot. If you, you can, if, if you don't like that, I bring it up and you want me to stop. No, I'm not going to stop until I'm, I see otherwise. So I hope to be, I and I want again, like I said earlier, I want to be wrong. I want to be proven wrong. And and you just do what you got to do. If you're upset that the stadium is too quiet, be the one that's making noise. You know, get those around you to be louder. Don't complain. Oh, they was told I had to sit down. Well, there's things that you have to comply with, unfortunately. But you you also can make noise sitting down just as much. Yeah, get, get behind that team, and you will see those four and five star recruits coming in. And it's it's hard to find four and five star recruits that have those grades. So you're looking. For, there's there's got to be a win win situation because, in the end, Notre Dame's going to take the money. Thank you very much. Right. Right. Notre Dame's not going to do something that's bad for Notre Dame. Every, every decision they make is calculated, and they understand the the effects of going in a possible wrong direction. Okay, and and they're not going they're not going to conform to a fan base that says lower your grade standards. So you can continue to complain, follow the team. It's going to fall on deaf ears. And I'm not going to start a whole conversation on this because this is not the topic of the video, but there's always also always the classic join a conference uh, talk that I hear too. But that's, that's, that's another video for another day. Absolutely. It's a, and it's a good one. Yeah, it, so. it is. Well, all I know is George, I think uh, we've covered a lot um, in these uh, what's going to turn out to be these last few videos. I'm speaking of when I eventually post this part of it. Even though we're even though we're doing this in one in one day, um, yep. <laughs> uh, so it it was a, it was this was a great conversation and everybody watching. I hope uh, hope you guys got something out of it and um, hopefully the guys that I mentioned by name uh, show uh, show up and watch us and get something out of it too because uh, there's a lot that every fan and not just of Notre Dame, not just of specifically football either, but any fan of any sport can learn something from and this is stuff that we have to bring to the table because i don't really see anybody else doing it treat people the way you want to be treated that's what it comes down to really it's uh, something something as simple as that <laughs> so uh so anyway george uh it was awesome to have you on and thank you for uh for filling in for uh for ben in this in this uh this uh, video series i had a great time and i hope you did too 
it's always a good time, man. We 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 tend to we can we can do these long winded conversations and get things going and on a roll. So one at all. It also helps too because a long video like this that I that I will eventually break down it keeps a video in reserve for the next you know post time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So so well, thanks for so having I, me. It's yeah, it, it's always a blast to have you on, and uh, it, it, you know Ben and I uh, we we're definitely proud to have you be in a, an official part of the show and not just uh not just some filler because we've ne- we've never seen you as just a filler. So yeah. we. We do uh, consider you officially part of the, the two Irish brothers team, and uh, maybe that's maybe that's not exactly the right. <laughs> it was three, two Irish brothers, but yet there's three of us in the in the crew. <laughs> so, no, no, I'm uh, the grammar's probably I'm, I'm, not I'm right. The, I'm 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 the go to I'm I'm the I'm the in reserve, and that's okay. It's your guy's brand, and that's the way you roll, and it's good. Um, no complaints from this guy. You know, well, coming out, coming out and talking. I love to talk sports, and I just want, I just want, I just want there to be success. Absolutely, same, same thing with us. That's how, that's how we feel as well. And, um, but yeah, no, we're we're glad to have you be officially a part of the team. At least that's that's how that's what we consider you to be. And uh, you know, the the starting, you know, the the closing pitcher is just as important as the starting pitcher. That's the best way I can put it. Enter seeing me next time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, George, thank you for thank you again for being on. Um, Thanks for thank, having me. Thank you to everyone for watching this series. I think you'll. I think it, you'll it, when it, when this is all said and done and put together and out, it should be uh, a good one. So, uh, so as always, everyone, I am Indy Sean Forty Five and. For my good buddy here, George Bashura, we say it all of you as always, and for and for Ben as well, even though he's not here on camera. As we always say, God bless, God, go uh, God bless, God bless, good night, and go Irish. <laughs> That's how. Let's do it one more time. God bless, good night, and go Irish. Good night, God bless, and go Irish. Amen, man. Good night, everyone. Have uh, until see you next time.